the swastika of the Nazi party. It is gone today, blasted from the earth, but the memory of its evil genius remains. Great is man's devastation of his own handiwork. Some men's thirst for conquest is unquenchable. Names like Genghis Khan and Attil of the Hun freeze the blood of men and strike terror into their hearts. Such a name was Adolf Hitler. What kind of man was this strutting, shouting fanatic of the Third Reich? If anyone really knew Adolf Hitler, surely it was his own family. Here is Adolf Hitler's sister today. Her name is Paula Wolf. Let her speak. I quote her. When we children played together, my brother Adolf was always the leader. All the others did what he told them to do. They must have had an instinct that his will was stronger than theirs. Father wanted Adolf to become a government official as he was himself. But my brother could not make up his mind. He wasn't the type to sit all the time. And therefore, as a government official, he would not feel at home. Hitler, a faceless nobody, a failure in early life who rose from the depths of a defeated and despairing Germany after World War I and fell at Armageddon years later amid the terrible wreckage of his own creation, the Third Reich. To historians, Hitler's success with the German masses stemmed from his gift of oratory, from his speeches, which had something of Wagnerian music, a foggy conglomeration of gods and heroes and blood and race. The tale of his boyhood in Kaiser Wilhelm's Germany is soon told. In the city streets, among the crowd, the camera's eye seeks in vain for the son of a petty customs official. Proud, apart, almost friendless, he dreams of being a poet, an architect, an artist. But he winds up as a house painter and sometime common laborer. Through his twenties, the world knew nothing of him. Nineteen fourteen. The Great War rescues him from failure, a time for heroic deeds. A new symbol, the swastika, rises from black German defeat. Members sign up for the German Workers' Party. The symbol appeals to Adolf Hitler. As a corporal, he had been wounded and gassed in the war, and he soon leads the bitter veterans in the dark days that follow. The parades are an integral part of this new political force, soon to become the Nationalist Socialist or Nazi Party. It is now 1920, and Hitler talks himself into the leadership of the party. Nineteen twenty-three, Hitler and General Ludendorff lead the abortive beer hall riots in Munich. Hitler goes to prison, and the fanatic Dr. Goebbels takes over the party. From headquarters in Munich, Goebbels screams, we build the Third Reich on propaganda. While the parades go on, Hitler sits in Landsberg prison and writes, Mein Kampf, the Bible of the Nazi movement, the answer to unemployment, bread lines, depression, fight, fight. Julius Schaub, an early follower of Hitler and a fellow prisoner during Germany's days of desperation, talks now. We have our gemeinsamen Festungszeit in Landsberg. I quote, while we were prisoners together at Landsberg, Adolf Hitler spent the mornings working on his book, Mein Kampf. In the evening after supper, when we came together, he used to read us several chapters from his book. There were discussions. The main participants in these discussions were Hess, Griebel, and Dr. Weber. For us young people, it was a training school, if I may say so. Because at that time, we hadn't realized just what Adolf Hitler was planning to do. Out of prison and now a hero, a happy Hitler resumes control of the party. The fascist salute borrowed from Mussolini becomes part of the ritual, along with the banners and the rallies. Other close ties with the Italian fascists are built. Hitler and Rudolf Hess greet Mussolini in Munich, perhaps seeking to learn the way to seize power. 
The anti-Semite fanatic Julius Stryker is there, and the groundwork is laid for cooperation between the fascists and the Nazis before Mussolini returned to Rome. Behind the pattern of demonstrations, parades, inflammatory speeches and rituals lies a diabolical purpose. Hitler says in Mein Kampf, man is a fighting animal. A nation being a community of fighters is a fighting unit. Any living organism which ceases to fight is doomed to destruction. The present government is weak. Therefore, true Germans must fight this government conceived in shame and perpetuated in weakness. In speech after speech, Hitler screams his dogma at the German people. Nazi meetings begin to look more like military maneuvers than political rallies. 1928. Hitler has 12 seats on the German Reichstag. By 1930, the World Depression is strangling Germany. Hitler now has an ally. Rioting and disorders play into the hands of the Nazis. And by 1932, they hold 230 seats. Violence and intimidation become part of the pattern. Their newspapers, filled with inflammatory propaganda, carry the message. 1932, Hindenburg defeats Hitler for the presidency by a slim margin. The beginning of the end for him. January 30th, 1933. Hindenburg is through. Hitler is named Chancellor, and in a torchlight parade, his followers pay pagan homage to the undisputed master of Germany. The Stahlhelm wore steel hats, the SS elite guards and the SA stormtroopers are all there, and they will spread terror throughout the land. Hitler now has the support of the big German cartels. Hitler is now able to put into practice his thesis, as spelled out in Mein Kampf, that the aim of all education and all effort is to produce a German who can become a soldier. The Nazi party can now start organized persecution of those Hitler has declared enemies of the state. Attention, Jews, the sign reads. The Nazi party's chosen goons will carry out their orders with a will. They swoop down on their victims. Homes are broken into day and night. Hitler says in Mein Kampf, only the application of brute force used continuously and ruthlessly can bring about a decision in favor of the side it supports. Early in 1933, all meetings of the Communist Party are forbidden in Germany. After the Reichstag fire, 4,000 are arrested and hurled into concentration camps behind barbed wire fences. Brown shirts and black shirts join in these roundups. Up to the time of Hitler's appointment as Chancellor, control of the Prussian police has rested in the hands of the President. Now that is ended. The Prussian police are commanded by Hermann Goering, whose beer barrel shape contrasts with the lean, hard bodies of the men under his command. not to reason why or to question the will of the Fuhrer. August 2nd, 1934, President von Hindenburg, the idol of the German people, dies. Hitler digs in, assuming the presidency and consolidating the office with that of Chancellor. He prods the German people toward his goal at an ever-quickening pace. The Nazi party consolidates its strength and follows its blueprint to dominate the entire country. Hitler begins to acquire the glassy stare of the self-convinced messiah and has already become a total dictator. Several months earlier, he told a dismayed Reichstag the details of his first bloodbath. Minister President Hermann Goering, Hitler says, has been the avenging angel of the Führer. Kurt von Schleicher and his wife have been shot dead. Captain Ernest Rome, once Hitler's companion, is gone. Cries out Hitler, if anyone reproaches me and asks why I did not resort to the regular courts of justice, then I say this. In this hour, I was responsible for the fate of the German people. 